Even though you might have watched these videos in a mere 10 hours, it was seven years ago that we started the videos using a boat to demonstrate the idea of fascial tensegrity, and now we've completed the journey around the anatomy trains. The anatomy trains has a wider significance than just another way of looking at the, at the myofascial system. The fact of the matter is that our way of looking at the myofascial system has been um, because we started out with two things. One is that the uh, Renaissance anatomists, like Vesalius, one of my heroes, and Albinus, and Leonardo da Vinci, when they started out to examine a body, they did it with a knife. They did it with the same tools that hunters and um, butchers use to cut up meat. And when you go into the body, uh, the skin comes off the, of the rest of the body at a layer of connective tissue. The muscles are separated from each other by layers of connective tissue. The organs are separated from each other by layers of connective tissue. They're hung on to the spine with strings of connective tissue. So these were natural places to cut. The connective tissue system was never really examined as a whole. I sometimes joke that if I had a time machine, I would go back to Bologna or wherever it was that uh, Vesalius was working, and I would take away all his knives and put a big vat of furniture stripper there. And so then he would come in and take this body and stick it in the vat of furniture stripper and strip away everything that was cellular and leave this extracellular matrix, this fascial net that would be one net from head to toe that would go from the scalp to the bottom of your feet. It would include the net within the bones. The bones would be about like leather, the cartilage, like slightly more supple leather. leather. If you took all the stuff away except this fibrous net. There's two reasons for this. One is that it keeps getting cut up with knives. Uh, and two, it's considered to be the dead material in between. I'm going to take issue with that. I'd, I'd argue with that idea that the connective tissue uh, matrix is dead. Um, it's just been the stuff that's been stripped out of the way to get at the other living, interesting stuff. So nobody's really considered it as a system. That goes for all the branches of medicine, but let's cut this down to the, the myofascial idea of massage and manipulation. We have defined the action of a muscle as what that muscle would do if you stripped every other muscle off the skeleton, left that one muscle in place, and approximated the two ends of the muscle along the direction of the fibers. That's how we say what a muscle does when it says action in a book, in book after book after book after book. The action of the muscle, the biceps, is defined as going from uh, the radial tuberosity up to, say, the coracoid process. So therefore, it is a um, supernator of the forearm, a flexor of the elbow, and a diagonal flexor of the shoulder. And that's how we have defined it. And opening this up to a more systems point of view is a very important thing for changing how we think about these uh, things. If we say the biceps is something that goes from the side of the thumb all the way up the arm to the shoulder down to the third and fourth rib and beyond, that says something else. It puts the biceps in context. It's actually true. It actually is connected. The thing that disconnects it is taking a knife and mentally stripping it away from the brachialis, from the radius, from everything else, and just seeing it as an object, as if we were a car and we were made up of parts. But we're not a car and we're not made up of parts. You know, if you think of a tree, you think of the roots and the trunk and the branches and the leaves. And if you look at the leaves, you'll see they have a cuticle and then stomata and then veins and um, something fills and then you look at the vein you look at the uh, veins and they have outer and inner xylem and phloem whatever it is I'm not a botanist I'm not going to be able to take this very far but we just break everything down into analysis by breaking down into smaller and smaller parts and look what is the contribution of the part to the whole but we're not really looking at well what happens when you put the holes back together if you think of the biceps as part of this structure that goes all the way down from the thumb to the ribs, then you can see that the biceps, the tonus of the biceps, the recruiting of the biceps, the engagement of the biceps in movement has to do with the stability of the thumb for people who are doing um, any kind of 
thumb work like trigger point work or, or uh, shiatsu work. It has to do with keeping the chest open and breathing. You can open the breathing by working on the biceps in certain people where that's the restriction. And if you just think of the biceps as a part, like a spark plug or a carburetor, you don't get that sense of its connection to the whole. It can't be taken out and replaced. I know, we take things out and replace them these days, surgically, but it's not, we don't grow that way. And we're not able to grow things that way. And if we don't uh, widen out our perspective and start to think that way, we are not respecting the legacy of Einstein, the legacy of Jung, the legacy of Heisenberg, the legacy of folks who showed us that it's a relational world. All this analysis of the muscles is based on a cause-effect world, and we're looking at a relational world where things are uh, interrelated in systems kinds of ways. So the anatomy trains, not to be too grandiose about it, the anatomy trains is a systems method of looking at the musculoskeletal system. It sees uh, not 600 muscles, it sees one muscle. There's one mind, there's one muscle, it just hangs out in 600 fascial pockets, but those 600 fascial pockets are not separate, they're 600 fascial pockets in one big fascial suit. Um, and if you understand that one big fascial suit and the interactions of the muscles within them, muscles can have actions farther along than their attachments at one end or the other, or actually broadly, which the uh, anatomy trains doesn't even address. The muscle can act on muscles next to it um, in its region. And we haven't even begun to explore that idea yet.